version of this uh, little dealio, and I really have nothing. I, I, if you guys have Q's, I will hopefully have A's. <laughs> um, does everybody, I mean, does everybody, does everybody know who I am? Hi, I'm Sonic. Sonic. My name's Roger Craig Smith. I'm a voice actor, that's, uh, or a voiceover artist, or a, a lucky, lucky person who gets to go and talk in front of microphones for a living. Um, <laughs> And let's see, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog is the voice I'm going to do. Oh, yeah. um, Chris Redfield from Resident Evil 5 and 6. I'm going to count Capcom. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, Ezio Auditore. Ezio Auditore from. Dance with the Dress. Huh? The Art Crafters, House Crafters, Dodge Ram Truck. Ram truck commercials right now. Pizza <laughs> Hut. Pizza Hut, I did that for a while. That was, uh, that was two and a half years. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, Rip Slinger from Planes, the Disney movie Planes. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I'm a voice actor. And I would, hopefully, if you guys are here, you have a question for me. But it can be anything from boxers or briefs, which I won't answer, but still. Uh, nothing's off the table, I should say. Well, most things are off the table, but still, we'll keep it safe and clean. Uh, first question, right back here. Yes. Hey, Roger. Hello. Good to see you, man. Um, Good to see you sir. I, I know um, I, I ask you this a lot, but I always like to see the updated stuff. Like, um, with all these characters you've done that get like action figures made, like Ezio and oh, yeah. Sonic and everything, uh, what ones do you own, and which ones are you looking forward to, like the Batman Arkham Origins stuff? I will buy whatever they make. <laughs> <laughs> I have, there was a giant Ezio doll that was like, Four hundred dollars, um, and I went. Well, that's a business expense. I need to, <laughs> I need to have that for promotions and marketing. And, and it was, you know, it's like fifty thousand points of articulation and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's it's funny when you're a grown man going like, can I get the Ezio doll? <laughs> action figure. Uh, exactly, action figure doll. It's a bad action figure. Uh, no, I, I do. I, I actually get you know a ton of that stuff because I'm I'm you know I'm celebrating this stuff just as anybody else would. That's my phone case. And, you know, yeah, because I was a dork who loved all this stuff. You know, uh, as a kid growing up, and and then as a chance to or when you get a chance to be a video game character or a cartoon character or or, or just even the, the the Ram Truck stuff is awesome. You hear your voice on the TV or on the radio, and so when you get to be something like a. a like an animated character or a video game character, and then they make a, a sorry, action figure uh, out of it. Yeah, I go get them. So uh, I've got Ezio. I will of course be getting as much Batman memorabilia as I can, um, and uh, and I've got Sonic the Hedgehog stuff. I've got Chris Redfield toys, and I've got Rip Slinger planes all over the place. I got the big movie poster on my wall. And, like posters and all that stuff. Yeah, just like anybody. I mean, imagine if you had the opportunity, what would you do? And it's funny because I'll be working with somebody and they'll be like, "Dude, really? Your cell phone cover is your character?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm in a Disney movie. I'm gonna celebrate that forever." If anybody given the opportunity, you would. You know, it's not like I'm gonna go. Well, that's just my job. No, I'm, holy cow, I'm a cartoon. Yeah, it up. Uh, yes. Right How are you offered the role of Sonic the Hedgehog? How was I offered? Yeah. I was never really offered as much as it was I went in and auditioned for it. Um, that's always the boring answer. People always uh, ask, you know, like, you know, how did you get the role of, or how did you convince Sega to hire? And it's no, I, I get a call from, I have an agency. The agency calls me up and says, hey, so and so would like to see you at, at such and such a place. And this is the time, you go in, you sit in a waiting room with sometimes a lot of other people, or sometimes it's staggered and you don't see the other guys that are auditioning for it, but you go in, you audition, and you leave. I call it trigonometry, because we don't want to, it's something you use once and never, you want to forget about it, at least for me, I was a film student. Um, and so I, I went in and auditioned, and then I think I got a call back, and then from there they, they, they then offer you the role, but it's, it's a process. So, and from there it's, you know, it, that's where the work is in the business. That's that's where we very much approach it like work. While it's a ton of fun to be the character, you are still your job is to audition. That's the that's the phrase they use. Uh, because if your job was to book work, we'd all be very bad at our jobs. Because it's uh, it's a, it's a numbers game in a lot of ways. And every time I turn on the TV, listen to the radio, watch video game trailers, that kind of stuff, I see all the things I didn't book. And it's funny because we all know one another in the business for the most part. And you'd be like, ah, oh, Troy Baker. <laughs> 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 yeah, then you 
Oh, Liam O'Brien. Oh, <laughs> Murray Lowenthal. Like, all, these games, all, the, all these games that we see, you know, these guys book these roles and, and, and we all kind of are auditioning for the same things. And Travis Willingham, Laura Bailey, we all know each other, we work together, we like one another and we're happy for one another's success. But it's uh, it's very much a process of you show up, you know you're going to see some of the same people with the same things because we're all auditioning for the same roles. And then uh, the game company says, we like Travis for this one. We like Liam, Yuri. Like all these people, so it's uh, it's sort of uneventful. I just show up, audition, and knock on wood. <laughs> yes. Yes, I was wondering, can you do your one line from Resident Evil Six when Chris was drunk at the bar and he chewed out that woman and said, "This, hey, your job is to sit there, shut up, look cute, and serve the drinks." Let's try. Listen, sister, your job is to sit there. Look cute. Look cute. <laughs> Line. <laughs> what was that? And shut up and serve the drinks. Shut up and serve the drinks. And then she soaks me with uh, with the drink, right? <laughs> yeah. And she says, was that close enough? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. Sorry. This is why I need a script. I'm terrible without a script. <laughs> to the side of the hedgehog. Yeah. Yes. Um, in the wonderful 101. Yes. When you... How did you react when you when you had to say the line, we got an annoying hedgehog to deal with? I think they knew what they were doing when they had me say that. Uh, I, we had a lot of fun with it. I worked with uh, Chris Zimmerman on that game. She's one of my favorite people in the, in the world. And that's a fun game, too. I think I like to play it. It's I'm hard. Like, I know it's hard. It's were you hard. by yeah. yourself or were you with the other voices, like no. Charlie Schneider, Tara Strong? Usually we uh, we record separately, um, and they, they have us do that because they want us to they want to get the, the, the cleanest sounding recording that they can, um, and microphones pick up everything. E even though you might not hear it, it's if somebody was recording from this microphone, they'd hear all of you guys in the background. And so when we talk conversationally, uh, we're all sort of talking over one another, and you can't have that with multiple microphones, so they usually record, even with planes, I never worked with another actor, Aww. it was, uh, I know, I, didn't, I, got, I only got to meet half of them, like, at the premiere, is when I finally got to meet some of these other co-stars, um, and, and that was three years of work on that, not three years of straight, you know, every five days a week, but three years in the making that worked on the project, and then finally on a Tuesday night, you know, that's when I got to meet the people that I was You did get to work with to. the others in Ninja Turtles. What's that? You, you did get to work with We do, with it the depends. Others. Like, uh, on Avengers Assemble, we all work together, so I work with uh, Liam, Troy, and Laura, and Travis, and, oh gosh. Um, Bumper Robinson. What's that? Bumper, Bumper Robinson. Robinson, yeah, who's Fred. Have way too much fun on that series. And, yeah. uh, and that's when it doesn't feel like work, but that's when it's like a big radio play. Um, but even then, uh, when we're, we all sort of sit in a big semicircle, um, and we recorded it, each, we each have our individual microphones, but even then, we can't step on each other's lines. So it's kind of a weird thing, where, where if my line is, look, you've got to understand that I, and then it says dot, 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 or the ellipses, I know that that's a trigger for the next actor to interrupt me, but they can't actually interrupt me. So it's kind of this weird pace thing where we all kind of know, okay, we've got to leave edit space between the lines so that the editor can slide up the, the potentiometers and all that stuff to make sure that they're getting a clean sound. But uh, it, it's a lot more fun to record like that. We all like being in the same room and we all are massive goofballs yeah. and you know everybody's got a stomach grumble or you know. <laughs> <laughs> it happens in the session a lot. No, one of us is always making stupid sounds. And, so we have a lot of fun recording like that. I think the directors prefer to have us alone <laughs> because we don't get a lot. Yeah. We don't get a lot done when we. Uh, well, you get a lot of goofy personalities in the room like that. Yeah. Uh, another question. Uh, in the purple. In the back. Um, I was wondering if um, video games are actually harder to do as an actor because a lot of times they have less of a clear story or at least a linear story, so you have to make different choices based on different lines that you're reading. Yes, they are. Next question. <laughs> yes, uh, for sure. I mean, that, that, as far as like the, the what we would call like vocally stressful work, because um, anytime you anytime you're doing a character, I mean, even Sonic the Hedgehog, if I do him long enough, it's it's a strain on the voice because you're you know you're, you're like that, and people don't do that normally. I mean, maybe some of you do. I don't know. <laughs> but we tend to not do things with our voice. We will do things with our voice in a week that most people won't do in a year. And video games tend to be the worst at that because when you think about a video game, 
uh, as opposed to an animated series or, or something like Planes. I walk into a plane session and you've got a director and a writer and a producer and they've said, okay, so here's the animatic. This is what needs to occur in this scene. We know exactly what's going to occur. You might come up with a little ad lib here and there, but we know your character needs to say this. And then it needs to go to this scene and then we'll get that done. And with video games, they, they have to be able to cover the fact that the player sort of has the, the control uh, over what your character is going to do, and that could be, is he just going to go run and stand in the corner and jump against the wall for five minutes? <laughs> and if so, do we want the same sound of him just going, <laughs> or do we want to give him five variations of what it sounds like when a guy walks into a wall? So with video games, we tend to go in, as you guys have heard many of us do up, up, up here these days, all the, the grunts and the efforts and the battle chatter and onomatopoeia and whatever they call it. <laughs> but it's where you start, you'll go through and record all the dialogue for the game, typically, and then they know they'll schedule one session where they are just going to destroy you with your voice. Because it's going to be, okay, so now um, next we've got uh, punching efforts. Okay, so there's you throwing a punch. Okay, if you want three in a row of the small efforts of, right? Then there's you getting punched, small punch efforts, getting punched, you know? We got three in a row of that. Now we get medium punches, throwing, being punched, all that stuff. And then it just goes on from there. Headbutts, uh, vomit, um, <laughs> falling from a 50 foot cliff, falling from a 150 foot cliff, falling from a 300 foot cliff, watching your friend fall from a 300 foot cliff, you know, that kind of thing. And so you go through and cover all those sounds and it just, it destroys you. And usually you can't work for a day or two after that because you, when you scream, you want it to try and sound as realistic. There's always people I see on the, like like panels where they'll they'll have like at, at some of the conventions where it's for like the industry, you'll have people who come in there and say like, I will teach you how to scream all day long, and I just go, good, do it. And I see you scream, and they go, ah! and they from the diaphragm, and it's all a very theatrical thing. And I go, great, that's not that's not gonna. Would you want Ezio to fall from a cliff? Big <laughs> time, huh? But no, you have to have the realistic sounds, and so we go in and try to do a realistic performance, and you just trash at your throat. And, uh, and then after that, you, you, you don't sound like yourself, you can't do the dialogue, and your voice starts to crack a lot and that kind of stuff. So yeah, video games tend to be the most stressful, although sometimes they can be the most fun. It just depends. I like, I like the narrative-based games. I tend to not even bother auditioning for like the military shooters anymore, because it's just the same stuff. MG42 on the hill, you know, reloading, yay, <laughs> <laughs> ah. over and over and over again, you know, ambush, um, I need an egg, 